These are Macau pork chop buns, and they're one of those simple good things. I mean, deep fried marinated pork, slapped between a toasted and heavily buttered bun. What's well, not to love? And while it's this Macau classic for a good reason, I do know that some of you guys might just be scratching your head a bit right now, wondering out loud, is, is this just a Portuguese Bafana? And like, yeah, it's pretty clear. Fried marinated pork chop, Papa Seco has bun. It's a Bafana, or at least a variant thereof. The story goes that the first pork chop buns in Macau came from a bakery called Daileiro Gay in Taipa Village, which was commissioned by the Portuguese colonial government to make some Portuguese breads. One day, one of the officials suggested that they toss a fried pork chop in between one of those buns. They obliged, and it spread from there. And while over the years there's been some degree of localization, some more inspired than others, the biggest, clearest deviation from Bafana that unites all pork chop buns these days is that bun itself. You see, these are Zai Bao, or piggy buns. Looks pretty close to a Papa Sekosh, but they're not quite Papa Sekosh. See, over the years, as bread recipes have made their way over from Europe to Asia, for whatever reason, they seem to get softer and chewier along the journey. After all, a Japanese shokupan is basically a pullman, but adapted to be softer and chewier. A Vietnamese banh mi is a dead ringer for a French baguette, but a little softer and chewier. And these piggy buns? You guessed it. So then, to make that bun, today we'll be doing a straight dough plus an autolise. So to 210 grams of bread flour, first go in with about 143 grams of water and mix that into a rough shaggy dough. Then cover and let that sit for 40 minutes. After that time then, take out the dough and stretch it into a log. Toss on two grams of sugar, four grams of salt, and two grams of yeast, and incorporate those by folding the dough over and then kneading everything by continuously smearing the dough against your work surface and rolling it all up. After about five minutes of that motion, toss on four grams of lard and incorporate that in the same way, about two to three minutes, and then we can slap. Now, what we'll be doing is this knead by slapping technique that's a classic in Guangdong bakeries, and it's an absolutely phenomenal way to develop your gluten. What you'll do is get your dough up to about shoulder height, slap it against your work surface, fold the edge of the dough over, rotate 90 degrees, and repeat. Alternatively, you could also knead this with a stand mixer as well, but you would need to go at a high speed, like about five, in order to mimic this effect. Either way, after about 300 slaps, you should be looking at something about like this, nothing too crazy stretchy or anything, but you should be able to at least see the outline of your fingers. So then just form that all into a ball and let it ferment for one hour. Halfway through fermenting though, take that guy out and give it a quick three or four folds, which will help develop the gluten further. Then just cover and let it ferment for the remaining time. Then. After that, just dust your dough, dust your work surface, and portion that out into three even pieces. Fold each into a ball by folding the edge in and over, pinching that craggly side closed, and then sort of sealing it by twisting it continuously against your work surface. Then toss those onto a tray and let them rest for 15 minutes. Then, to shape, just dust the dough, dust the work surface, and with the smooth side down, Start by slapping the ball against your work surface to sort of lengthen it a touch, and then press that all flat. Then, from the edge in the long direction, fold it in about halfway, press, fold it again, and press. Then, seam side down, fold it into a rough cigar shape by cupping your hands in this way and rolling. Then flip, pinch closed whatever is left of that seam, and place that onto your baking tray seam side down. Shape each one, then cover to proof for a final 45 minutes. As that's proofing though, we'll preheat our oven to 220 Celsius and toss in a tray of water to develop steam and help impart a bit of a crust. Then, swinging back to the dough, after that 45 minutes, it should be at the stage where the dough can slowly bounce back if you pressed it in with your finger. So, then just score those by grabbing a razor, slicing each of them lengthwise, and after working through each one, we can bake. So again, 220 Celsius, 14 minutes, but 
with five minutes remaining, we'll remove that water at first so that the buns can develop a touch of browning. Then, after that time, our buns are done, so just let those cool right down on a cooling rack. Now, for the pork chop, we're gonna marinate these, but definitely know that basically every shop will have their own approach. Some cha chan tang marinades can get pretty Cantonese, while some of the more famous shops in Macau are a bit more lucifone in nature, and that's what we'll be aiming for today. Either way, the one constant will be pounding that pork chop thin. Two ways to do this. The ever so classic Western mallet approach would be fantastic, and you're welcome to go that route, but we don't own one. So instead, we'll do this the Cantonese way, which is to pound the pork chop with the back of a knife, turn 45 degrees, pound it again, and then slap it thin. This won't get things quite as evenly thin as the hammer, but it'll tenderize just as well. Then, to marinate, we'll be starting things off by toasting a bit of spices. This was just a half teaspoon of cumin seeds, one teaspoon of coriander seeds, and two teaspoons of white pepper. Now, fair warning that this pre-toasting of the spices is kind of my own personal pathology. I haven't seen anyone else do this, so definitely do feel free to just use pre-ground bottled spices instead, if you like. Either way, just toss those to a mortar and pound that together with two teaspoons of salt and three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda. Once ground, also toss in 35 grams worth of slab sugar or dark brown sugar, together with a half tablespoon of chicken bouillon powder, and mix that well. Then, transfer that mix over to your pork chops and massage that in. Then, toss in some aromatics, a quarter of an onion sliced, eight cloves of smashed garlic, and what's gonna feel like a borderline unreasonable three grams worth of dried bay leaves. Massage that all together, then hit it with three quarters of a cup of either white wine, shaoxing wine, or some watered down brandy. Cover that all up and toss that in the fridge to marinate for at least eight hours. Then, after that time, just take out the pork chops, remove any obvious solids, sort of stretch it out a touch, and set it aside to fry. Now, in Macau, these are generally deep fried. So that'll be our approach today, but obviously feel completely free to either shallow fry or pan fry these instead. So get a pot of oil up to 160 centigrade, and over a medium high flame, toss your pork chop in. This will lower the temperature, which is fine because we'll be aiming to fry these at around 140. Just fry it for about two minutes, flipping halfway through or until the pork is good and done. Then just slice your piggy buns in half and toast them. If you've got a toaster oven, great, but we don't, so we'll be pan toasting these in a generous quantity of butter. So after about five minutes of that, remove, optionally toss on another small slab of butter and lay your fried pork chop on top. And then just like that, you've got yourself some pork chop buns. So with the piggy bun, besides making it into a pork chop bun sandwich, you can also make it into something called nai yao zhu, which is condensed milk toast. What you do is basically also just toast it with butter in a pan, then sprinkle some sugar on, and then just drizzle as much as condensed milk as you like, and just eat it straight as a very delicious cha tan tang classic toast. So all right, check out the recipe in the description box. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.